AFI Forum court case against Julius Malema, Mbuyaseni and Lozi and the economic freedom fighters turned out to become quite a spectacle. Rioters outside the court precinct are chanting kill the Boer and cursing at AFI Forum's representatives, presumably in an attempt to intimidate us. Some were blocking the gates, even trying to grab our property as we walked by. One day, two people tried to forcefully grab the book from which I was testifying from my hands. Another day, my cell phone was forcefully grabbed from my hands. Fortunately, a private security officer was able to get it back. The EFF's legal team tried to get me convicted for contempt of court after I took a photo in the court. The judge, however, ruled that what I did was not a breach of any court order. Supporters of the EFF, who were wearing a Zapu t-shirts, disrupted the court proceedings by singing Dubula Ibunu, which, if translated, means shoot the Boer, and chanting political slogans. They claimed that they will not be intimidated by white fragility and that they will keep singing such songs. The EFF representative who was testifying under oath was exposed by advocate Mark Oppenheimer as a complete liar. And I was cross-examined for two days. In what I experienced as a bizarre interaction, we spent what seemed like several hours arguing about a source reference in my book, during which the legal team of the EFF claimed that the book, Triergrond, to which I refer in my footnotes, doesn't exist. In what I experienced to be a cheap shot at misrepresenting AfriForum's position, I was first asked to confirm that I believed that the ruling party has a flawed perception of history, which I of course did, after which the legal team for the EFF claimed that it was my testimony that black people in South Africa were never dispossessed of their land, which obviously isn't the same thing. Fortunately, I was able to point that out as a misrepresentation. Spectacles aside, what is this court case really about? In 2020, a young farm manager by the name of Brendan Horner was murdered on a farm near Sienakal. When the matter was eventually heard and people who were arrested in connection with the murder had to appear in court, a large group of people gathered outside the court out of protest against farm murders in South Africa. An unfortunate event transpired where a group of people stormed a police station and overturned a police vehicle. At a following appearance, Julius Malema, Mbuyaseni and Lozi and a large group of EFF supporters gathered outside the courtroom. While Malema attended the court proceedings seated next to the Minister of Police, his supporters were chanting, kill the boer, kill the farmer, outside the court building. And Lozi addressed the crowd, making a speech which, in our evaluation, could amount to incitement to commit arson. Even though the song in question has already been declared hate speech by the South African Human Rights Commission, and even though Malema is bound by a court order of the Supreme Court of Appeals that he should encourage his supporters not to sing such songs, he never repudiated their actions. In fact, in correspondence between our legal teams, it became quite clear that he endorses their conduct. AfriForum took the matter to the Equality Court in terms of the Promotion of Equality and Prevention of Unfair Discrimination Act, also known as PEPUDA or simply the Equality Act. This act particularly prohibits hate speech. It is our argument that the song is clearly hate speech as it obviously complies with the legal definition of hate speech. In layman's terms, it can be said that hate speech is when words are published in which a group of people is targeted based on their identity, such as ethnicity or religion, in which those words could reasonably be construed to be harmful or to incite harm and to propagate hatred. Furthermore, the question of hate speech against farmers is not merely an academic debate given that farm murders is a very real crisis in our rural communities. It was my testimony before the court that farm murders occur in complete disproportionate numbers and that they are exceptionally brutal. Even though it is generally contested and even though it isn't necessary to prove this for the sake of having a statement declared to be hate speech, it was my testimony that a link has been proven between hate speech and farm murders. And also 
that the political motive behind farm murders appeared to be underestimated. I testified about the attack on Leon Kukumur, during which the attackers screamed, Die, white man, viva Malema. I testified about the attack on Mike Bonnet, where he was called a white shit who had stolen the land by his attackers. I testified about the murder of Godfrey Hewer, where his murderer testified under oath that he was influenced by the song, Kill the Boer, Kill the Farmer. I testified about a particularly brutal farm murder where the words kill the boer were written on the farmhouse wall with the blood of one of the victims. I testified about preliminary research done by AfriForum which seems to indicate that there can be an upsurge in farm attacks and farm murders following high profile incidents of hate speech. The point however is this, farm attacks is a serious crisis. And one that is not only generally underestimated, but also one that is often denied, or even worse, romanticized by senior politicians such as Malema. Malema is a leader who has influence over his supporters. When he makes speeches in which he says that he is not calling for the slaughter of white people, at least for now, or that all white people are criminals and should be treated as such, or that he intends to slit the throat of whiteness. And then he bursts into song singing words like, shoot to kill, kill a man. It is a very serious matter. This is not a question for academic debate. Malema and his supporters are singing, shoot to kill and kill the boer, kill the farmer, while people are actually being murdered. There is no civilized society on earth where behavior like this can be tolerated. And most importantly, we can never succumb to a situation where this type of behavior becomes normalized. It isn't normal and it is up to us to ensure that it never becomes normal. My name is Aaron Strutz and this is your fact sheet.